Good evening. Uh, this video summarizes the first lesson we took during week one. The lesson uh, was types of reproduction. It is in unit two. Okay, so I'm going just to revise the main ideas we discussed and we learned in week one. Okay, so the lesson was lesson two, types of reproduction in unit two, which is reproduction of organism. During this lesson, we discussed the definition of reproduction. We identified the types of reproduction, sexual and asexual reproduction, and we recognized some examples. Also, we recognized the advantages and disadvantages of sexual and asexual reproduction. To start with, reproduction is a process by which organisms or living things produce new organisms. The new organisms produced are named offspring. Okay, so there are two types of reproduction. They are sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. To start with asexual reproduction, a Sexual reproduction, it's a type of reproduction that occurs when only one parent organism or part of it produces a new organism, okay? The new organism that is formed is genetically identical to the parent, like copy of it. So if we observe this one, we can see that this one parent hydra on its side, a new organism is starting to grow. And finally, this organism separates from the parent hydra. Hydra is a freshwater animal that reproduces sexually and asexually. Asexually, like this example, when one hydra, okay, from its side, a new hydra grows and separates. And the result is a new organism that is genetically identical to the parent. Okay, so the genetic material is taken by the new hydra from the parent. So all the characteristics are the same. All the traits are inherited from the parent hydra. Okay, let's speak more about asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, again, it requires one parent and the offspring or the new organism, they have characteristics that are the same, identical to the parent. And this kind of reproduction, it's mostly in single-celled organism like bacteria, okay? like archaea and some types of protists, but not only single-celled organism, asexual reproduction can take place in multicellular organisms, like hydra, which is an animal, planaria. Planaria are flatworms that they are able to split their body into two equal parts. And each part grows into a new planarian worm or a planarian living thing. Okay, so here also we have strawberries. The strawberries are plants that are able to reproduce asexually. Okay, so these are some examples and don't forget that bacteria also reproduce asexually. Uh, during asexual reproduction, the parent plant, like this example, look, the parent cell divides into two equal cells, okay? And each one is identical to the parent plant or the parent, sorry, the parent cell. Okay, so here new daughter cells that are identical to the parent cell. Here's some examples like planarian, it's kind of flatworm, uh, the body of planarian splits into two equal parts and each part grows into a new planarian 
okay? And they are identical to the parent. Hydra, Hydra also here, then the result is two Hydra that are same as the parent, genetically identical to the parent. Starfish also reproduces asexually by here, look, small part, okay, will grow into a new complete starfish. This is what asexual reproduction means. One parent produces a new organism or organisms that are identical genetically to their parent. They take the same DNA, okay? So all characteristics will be the same. For sexual reproduction, it's different. Sexual reproduction occurs when genetic material from two different cells combine to produce offspring. So here, two parents, they produce a new organism, the male and the female. The male produces a sex cell called the sperm and the female produces another sex cells sex cell called the egg. These two cells from the two parents fuse together. Okay? When they fuse together, this process is called fertilization. Fertilization is a process when is a process when the sperm, which is the male sex cell, fuses with the egg, which is the female sex cell. When fertilization takes place, we can name this one zygote. The zygote forms as a result of fertilization. Then this zygote starts to divide. The zygote is made up of cells. And these cells, okay, will divide to form an embryo. Okay, so B is an embryo. And after that, this embryo also complete cell division in order to form, like this example, the group of cells will form tissues and tissues then form organs and then organs form organ systems and finally organism. So a new organism is formed from two parents. And this new organism is genetically different from one of the parents. How? Because the new organism takes 50% of the DNA from the dad and 50% from of the DNA from the mom. Okay, so the genetic material here of the offspring is what is a combination between DNA from dad and DNA from mom. Okay, so offspring get genetic information from both parents Okay, which would create variations. That's why in sexual reproduction, organisms produced, they are different from their parents. They are not copy from one of the parents because the DNA is not identical to one of the DNA of the parents. No, it is like from the two parents. So the offspring they are genetically different from their parents. Okay, this, this would create variations. So different organisms produced, they have different characteristics. Okay, so let's see, uh, speak uh, more about sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction requires two parents. Each organism has a specialized sex cells. The male sex cell is the egg, and uh, sorry, the male sex cell is the sperm, and the female sex cell is the egg. It occurs when the male and female sex cells fuse together, and when they fuse together, we name this process fertilization. Offspring, they have characteristics of both parents. Why? Because offspring, they take the DNA. 50% of it from the dad and 50% of it from the mom. Okay, so offspring are not identical. Examples of sexual reproduction. 
It takes place in humans. It takes place in many animals like penguins and monkeys. They reproduce sexually. Okay, this, this picture shows how the DNA is taken from the two parents. The new organism that is formed has 50%. If we look at the DNA, the blue one, it is taken 50% from the dad and 50% from the mom. So sexual reproduction is a form of reproduction that requires two parents. And these two parents, they have sex cells, the sperm and the egg, and it creates offspring that are similar, but never the same as the parents. So the offspring are genetically different from the parents. This also shows how, the, how sexual reproduction takes place. The male sperm and the, females, and the female egg fuse together, form the zygote, and this zygote then divides to form embryo that is made up of a group of cells, and this embryo then develops finally to form the new complete organism. Okay, so if we compare the sexual and the asexual reproduction, they are different in what? Sexual reproduction requires two parents, okay, uh, requires sex cells, and the result is offspring that are genetically different from the parents. The offspring take 50% of the DNA from the dad and 50% of the DNA from the mom, and so this would create variations, but asexual reproduction requires only one parent, and the offspring are genetically identical to the parent because the DNA is taken from the parent. Same DNA, so the characteristics and the traits are the same, like a copy from the parent. Now, if we speak about the advantages and the disadvantages of asexual reproduction, Asexual reproduction, as we said, only one parent is required and the new organism is genetically identical to the parent. Now, what are some advantages and disadvantages of this kind of reproduction? Asexual reproduction, first, it has advantages, many advantages. First, it enables organism to reproduce without a mate. No need for a partner, no need for looking for another living thing to mate, no. Only one organism is able to produce a new organism. This is very important in what? It takes less time and less energy. Why it takes less time? Because no need for the organism to go from one place to another and to look for a partner. This will take time if the organism needs partner. If an organism needs partner, this will take time. And for example, if an animal needs a partner to mate, it has to go from one place to another to look for a partner. So this will cause the animal to consume more energy. That's why in the asexual reproduction, we can say it takes less time and less energy. So an organism, if the conditions, if the environmental conditions are suitable and available, the organism reproduces uh, quickly and with less energy. One more thing, one more advantage is that Asexual reproduction produced large number of offspring. This is a rapid process. When the conditions, when the environmental conditions and when uh, everything is suitable, an organism can reproduce large number of offspring. So this is an advantage. But asexual reproduction 
has some disadvantages. Okay? Uh, these disadvantages are asexual reproduction result in less or little genetic variation with a population because an organism that is produced is a copy of the parent and all of a spring are copy from the parent so here we don't have genetic variations the organism all, all organisms produced they are the same as their parent so no variation all of them are the same and all have the same dna like the dna of the parent so no genetic variation if we look at this picture we can observe here that asexual reproduction produces offspring that are identical all of the offspring here are the same no variations so this is a disadvantage okay so within a population no variations all of a spring that are from the same parent they look like the same so asexual reproduction results in little or no genetic variation now uh, you have to know also that genetic variation can give organisms better chance of survival so asexual reproduction because it results in less genetic variation so this one will cause like for the organisms to be with less chance of survival when environmental uh, changes takes place okay so here because no genetic variation organisms they have less chance of survival when the environmental condition conditions the change the second uh, note you have to know also that one of the disadvantages of asexual reproduction is that may cause genetic changes may cause mutations what do we mean by mutations a mutation is the change in the dna for example if an organism has a mutation in its dna if it reproduces asexually, all of a spring will have the same mutation. Okay, so mutation takes place in the DNA, in the genetic material. It's a change in the genetic material. If an organism has a mutation in asexual reproduction, all, all of a spring, they will have the same mutation in their dna okay so genetic mutation in the cells the mutation will be passed to offspring okay all of a spring will have the same mutations okay now if we speak about the sexual reproduction if we speak about sexual reproduction Sexual reproduction also, it has advantages and disadvantages. Let's discuss together what are the advantages and the disadvantages of sexual reproduction. The first, uh, to start with, the advantages of sexual reproduction are sexual reproduction result in genetic variation. This is a like beneficial or good thing so not all of a spring look like the same so for example in a human like brothers and sisters they are not genetically identical we have variation we have different characteristics so this genetic variation it's not as in asexual reproduction here we have genetic variation we have uh, different characteristics between the organisms, okay, of the same parents, uh, and genetic variation, it results in, like, gives higher 
chance of survival when environmental conditions it changes okay so it can easily adapt organisms can easily adapt to environmental changes and this will increase their chance of survival they are able to adapt to their environment because they are not carrying the same dna they are not carrying the same traits they have variation in the characteristics they are so they are able to adapt to the environmental changes these are some advantages okay so we have variation and variation results in a uh, higher chance of survival and it can it allows organisms to adapt easily to their environment but there are many disadvantages of sexual reproduction sexual reproduction as you know two parents are required in order for the organism to find a partner, the organism has to go from one place to another in order to look for a partner. I'm speaking about animals mostly. Animals, the male, the male animal has to go from one place to another in order to find a suitable partner, in order to meet. Okay? So this will require more time and this will require more energy because the organism has to go from one place to another to search for if i'm speaking about animals okay it has to go from one place to another in order to look for a partner so this causes the organism to consume more energy okay one more thing is that you have to know not only uh, it takes time because an organism has to find mate, no. Because also organisms that reproduce sexually, they have to be with like developed sex cells. So young animals, for example, animals that reproduce sexually, young animals, their sex cells are not ready in order to uh, produce new organisms. So offspring, they must grow, mature, they have to reach maturity before they are uh, old enough to produce sex cells. So this requires time in order for an organism to be mature, in order for the organism to be with developed sex cells and also finding mates requires time and energy as i mentioned okay girls so if we go back to this picture girls and boys if we go back to uh, this picture we can see here that that in asexual reproduction less or no genetic variation all of them are the same but for sexual reproduction, the advantage here is that different offspring from the same parents, they don't look like the same. We have variation here. We have like different characteristics, different traits. So these three are from the same parents, but they don't look like the same as in the first example, as in asexual reproduction. So here we have different colors, different shapes. Okay, so this is like result in genetic variation. Okay, so these are the advantages and the disadvantages of the sexual reproduction. If we compare sexual and asexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction, it requires more than one organism. Uh, but asexual reproduction requires only one organism. This is one difference. Uh, sexual reproduction offspring are genetically unique. So each offspring has its own DNA. That is different from the DNA of the second offspring. But 
in asexual reproduction, organisms are genetically identical. So all have the same DNA. Okay, mostly have the same DNA. And they are genetically identical to their parents. The similarities between sexual and asexual reproduction are both are types of reproduction. Uh, both produce offspring or both create new organism. Okay, the important point that you have to know is the, that during sexual reproduction, don't forget the two parents are required and two different sex cells are required. They have to fuse together to form zygote and the zygote will grow into a an embryo and the embryo finally after a time will grow into a complete full organism okay uh, these are the points of the uh, first lesson we took uh, so i hope everything is clear and thank you so much for listening.